Hello, so Jerry Lee Lewis, the legendary rock and roll piano player and singer, has died aged 87. I put him on twice in 2006 and 2008. Two tours of the UK. I will reveal what I know about him, including things I've not told anybody. So stick with this video. Most of his hits were cover versions of songs written by other people. He was a troubled person. There's an article in Rolling Stone from the 1980s that he's very well researched to talk to a lot of people who knew him at the time, who basically points to like somebody getting away with murder because he was like such a big name in the local Louisiana backwoods. All the sheriffs and all the judges and things, when he was being accused of various crimes, like for example, assault or whatever, the judge would come to him rather than him be arrested or summoned. And that he was protected by people around him. If you tried to speak to him, somebody else wouldn't answer for him. So it was almost as if you're dealing with royalty. I suppose he would be rock and roll royalty. He has got a history of um, assault. I think it's safe to say that he was pretty racist. I did mention this to one or two people in his circle and they excused it because he was a product of his times, the 1930s, born in this poor fight farming family in Louisiana. Of course, it's very hard for us to think about those days and that time in that area because that's the era of the KKK, that's like families being burned out for being black, that's like segregation, not nice at all. People say that he worked with Chuck Berry and people like that. And I know for a fact that he didn't really have a lot of time for Chuck Berry. And Chuck Berry certainly did have a lot of time for Jerry Lee Lewis. And he told me a couple of things which I'm sworn not to tell people, which I won't. I also had my own little runnings with him on that racism issue, him and his daughter. Which, on the face of it, could have been misunderstandings, but... He had his first falling out with the UK when he came over with his child bride in the 1950s. And that caused a bit of a stink, obviously and he never really recovered from that. Jerry Lee went over there and Oscar Davis was his manager then and didn't go to protect him. All the shows were called off and the Lewises took the first flight home. Uh, Jerry, what about this reception in London? Can you tell us about that? Yes, sir. Uh, we had a very good reception, sir. Oh, is that so? Yes, we had a very nice time and... Uh, the people treated us real nice. The first time I put him on in 2006, he wasn't very well. So I'm pretty sure he was on drugs. He was very frail. He was incoherent most of the time. This is where it gets slightly contentious because a lot of people thought he was being drugged by his daughter, Phoebe. Now, I'm not saying I thought this, but this is what people told me that they thought, that he was being drugged to keep him in line and there was this conspiracy theory and there was some sort of falling out between Phoebe and him. On the first tour that we did, he seemed a lot closer closer to Phoebe that on the second tour, which was two years later. I don't know if you read anything into that. I like it my hate record and uh... Jerry Lewis never liked me, that's that was obvious from the first time that we met. He had this habit of talking to people as if you weren't there. It, at first I thought he was talking to his daughter and ignoring who else was in the room, mostly me. But I later found out that he was basically, well, I suspected that, with him, you can never tell what was going on. People say they knew, knew him a lot better than me. He used to have two guys who had flash cars who used to drive him around. They obviously spent more time with him than I did. But the short times I spent with him, he wasn't a very likeable person at all. And, and he would talk about you in the third person, would say to his daughter, is this guy for real? You know, what the fuck is this guy saying? And stuff like that. So, there you go. Like he used to stay in his hotel room, which I got a very posh hotel room. Five star, had to be five star, although frankly, it didn't really matter to him whether you put him in like a cellar, because he would have all the windows closed, the curtains closed, and never went out of the room, never went down to breakfast or anything like that, never did anything. And he used to stay in the room, and also it's this thing, you've got to get him a TV, you've got to get him a DVD player, and all these things. Like, so I went out and I bought him a DVD player, and I got him some DVDs, and I just, people said he wants like very simple taste, so I got him like pretty average Hollywood movies. When he'd done his 10 days, what it was, in this really expensive hotel suite, I took away the DVD player afterwards when I collected it, and I found out there's a piece of cardboard 
in it, which came when it had been packed up at the thing, and it was still there. When you're putting on a show like that, you have to pay for things, like you've got to pay for the meals, all the meals for him and the band and his entourage. Now, most people, it's just like maybe the artist, their band, a couple of roadies, maybe a manager, a couple of wives maybe, and that'd be it, no one else. But with Jerry Lee Lewis, people used to turn up. And I remember when we put him on the second time, he was staying in the Royal Gardens Hotel in London, which is not the cheapest hotel in the world, although we did have a very good deal, I will say that. But it was his son, Jerry Lee Lewis III. It was a school friend turned up of his, who we hadn't seen for 20 years. He was being paid by a Dutch promoter as well. Would you like a schmuck and a pancake? on the second tour. I think you basically paid him a fee and then charged me extra per show. And I had to pay for all the hotels. And there was him and his crew. There were like maybe 20 people staying in this five-star hotel. Well, I did a show with Chuck Berry at the 100 Club. It was very successful. And even though they charge a lot of money, these performers, and we're talking of tens of thousands of pounds, not like 50 quid or something, or even 5,000 pounds. So we've got a small club, which I did with Chuck Berry. I think I charged 200 pounds, about to be 150. But I can't remember what it was. It seemed worth it because you got like close up and I put on a very good support. Act nine below zero in that case. So with Chuck Berry, it was fantastic. Everybody really enjoyed it. Jerry Lee Lewis was a bit more fraught. Um, it was, and I remember before the show, I took them to a friend of mine at a restaurant, Steph's around the corner. Very good Italian restaurant, no longer there, sadly. They would order things, just everybody, just to try it. Say in 2006, I would never do it again. But funny enough, it was the DJ Mark Lamar that talked me into it, actually. I think we just did two shows. We just did London at the 100 Club, and then I did this show with Wanda Jackson at the Town and Country Club, and I can't remember if we did anything else. Frankly, I tend to wipe these things from my mind because it's such an unpleasant time, all this, and dealing with people, and he couldn't perform for very long, so, and he used to, like, start slowly. And when he started to play Great Balls of Fire, You basically knew the whole thing was over. And the crew knew that when he kicked his stool over, which sometimes he had to have a bit of help to actually get the stool to fall over. But when he kicked his stool away, shall we say, that was when the show was over and he needed help in off the stage. And then the chances of doing an encore were like minus 230. And he'd be gone by the time people stopped. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. You can like it if you like. Watch my other one about Jerry Lee Lewis. It's more on the first tour. He was still alive when I was making it, so I couldn't be too specific about some things. But watch it, and uh, yeah, watch it. And uh, see you next time. Subscribe if you like. Very good to see you. Thank you, see you next time, goodbye.